Hey everybody, this is Justin with Electric Bike Report. And today we're going to be reviewing the Blix Packagini electric cargo bike. Now Blix has labeled this as a natural vehicle replacement and they made some pretty significant upgrades from the previous version. So diving into this review, our question was, were these upgrades good enough to make this to where you could actually replace your car? Follow along in this review and we'll take you through our testing and find out. All right, so Blix dubbed the latest version of the PACA the Genie. And this is a reference to being a genie in a bottle simply because all of their customers were asking for three specific upgrades to the older version of the PACA. Number one, they were asking for hydraulic disc brakes for better, better stopping power. Number two, they wanted a more powerful mo motor for climbing steep, challenging hills, especially when you have this thing loaded up. And then number three, they wanted a longer battery range. And, and really, those are the three main things that you want in a cargo e-bike. You want power, you want range, and you want safety. You know, these bikes really are built to carry a lot of different things from groceries to your precious cargo being kids, right? So you really do want all of those three things. And so before we dive into our test results to see how it did, let's first look at some of the key specs on the Packagini. Okay, to start off, the Blix Packagini is a class two e-bike. That means pedal assist and throttle assist up to 20 miles per hour. Now, quick side note, you can up this to class three if you would like. Our strong recommendation, keep it a class two. It did really well. And frankly, when you're loading up cargo, our, our again, strong recommendation, just keep it a class two, it does really well. Moving on from that, you know, they labeled this the Genie. How did they do in the three wishes and what did they do to actually grant those, right? So first of all, the motor, they spec'd it with a higher torque motor. So this is a Shangi motor, 750 watts still, but they bumped it from 50 to 90 newton meters of torque to make it, again, in theory, more powerful climb in the hill. On the battery side, you'll see we have two batteries here. One, very well integrated up front, and then the second battery they kind of put underneath the, underneath the saddle here. And each battery, is a 48 volt, 12.8 amp hour battery that gives you 614 watt hours of capacity. So combined, that's 1,228 watt hours. That's a lot. Um, so yes, definitely this should go quite a long ways on the range. On to the brakes. They did upgrade to the Bengal hydraulic disc brakes. These are two dual piston disc brakes and they also do feature the auto cutoff. And so what that means is as soon as you tap the brakes, it cuts power to the motor, which I think is very important on a cargo bike, just because when you really start loading this up, um, it's nice to know from a safety standpoint that A, when you, when you hit the brakes, it'll stop, but it will also kick off that motor. Um, they have kept the throttle, which I also do like on these cargo e bikes, especially the rear hub because otherwise you end up kind of having to worry about shifting when you come to a stop and start. So like the throttle, um, speaking of shifting, they went with a Shimano Acera drivetrain. So it's a seven speed drivetrain. The front is a 48 tooth chain ring and the rear you have a 14 to 34 tooth range. So it's a good amount of range. We're gonna talk about that in our testing, kind of a sneak peek. I actually do think that they should increase the size of this just a little bit. Um, in addition, a couple of things that I want to point out, it's a nice LCD display. It's very basic, um, which is fine for me because you can just get on and go. There really is not a learning curve. There's not a lot that you can adjust. And again, for me, that is great. Um, and then finally, I did want to point out they have integrated front lights and rear brake lights, again, just for that added safety factor. Okay, so all of those components really give us a very nice, high quality e-cargo bike. As you can see, it's very clean. All the cables are wrapped nicely. They're routed nicely throughout the bike. You barely even notice them. Um, and it, 
in my opinion and our team's opinion, it just looks very sleek and well done. It's also surprisingly lighter weight than you think it should be. No, it's not light, but it is lighter than you would think. It is with both batteries, it is just over 75, so 75 and a half pounds. And again, that's a little lighter than we would typically see on an e-cargo bike. Um, but if you remove both batteries, which you can do, it drops it down to right around 60 pounds, which the nice thing about that is it can fit on a lot more bike racks for transportation that way. Um, now, from a capacity standpoint, there's four, 400 total pounds of weight capacity and that's divided up a couple different ways. So first, the rider can be up to 250 pounds. The front rack can hold 50 pounds max capacity and the rear rack can hold 150 pounds. So say you're a 150 pound rider, you can have 200 pounds of cargo. If you're a 250 pound rider, you can have 150 pounds of cargo kind of dispersed accordingly. So nice weight capacity, to be honest, I tried to load this thing up and I didn't even come close to the 400 pounds. I, I don't know if you could do that unless you're actually putting multiple riders that are fairly decent sized on the bike. Um, other thing that we do like about the bike is it has a lower standover height. You'll notice they spec this with 20 inch um, tires and that gives you a standover height of 19.4 inches. So as I stand over it, you'll notice I do have to lift my leg a little bit, but it is easy to get off, easy to get on. And when you're loaded up with cargo, that's actually more important than you would normally think. Finally, what all that does is it Blix has said that this will fit riders from five foot one to six foot three. We actually tested that range down to five foot one, totally fine. We tested it beyond six foot three with our six foot five, with Michael who's six foot five, and he felt comfortable on it as well. Yes, he did. Him and both, him and Griffin both wanted to adjust this stem up to be a little more comfortable for them. But really you can, you can fit a lot of different riders on here. For me personally, I like just to drop the seat a little bit probably a little below what you normally would. And that's so when I'm riding on it, I can still get my feet down and kind of control the bike when I come to a stop. Um, but again, bottom line, very well-built bike, really good components. We think Blix did a great job with that. All right, now it is time to dive into our testing. And first up, the brake test. So the Electric Bike Report brake test we put Griffin, who's a 230 pound rider, he gets up to 20 miles per hour, and then from a seated position, stops as quickly as he can. Again, we're trying to replicate, we've adjusted this lately, where we're trying to replicate a little more natural braking, so consumers who are considering buying this bike would know about how long it takes to brake, again, if you're going the full 20 miles per hour. So, the Bengal Aries 3 hydraulic disc brakes that are spec'd with this bike, stopped at 23 feet, one inch. That's the average over three stops that Griffin did. And what does that translate to? Really, it is pretty solid stopping power. It's about what we expected out of these brakes. Um, and I can tell you, me riding around both with cargo without, I have never had an issue stopping. I have always felt very safe and secure. Griffin's comment um, from the brake test was that it really felt like the Bengal brakes grabbed the wheel and just helped slow it down versus locking it up and skidding and slightly fishtailing, right? If you're very experienced, you can do that and kind of control that. But I think it's important on a cargo bike that you don't fishtail when you, when you brake. You don't want to lock them up. And so that comment was actually very assuring and I think they did a great job specking with these Bengal brakes. The only thing that I would really mentioned to you is that we have over the last couple of years found that the Bengal brakes tend to need just a little bit more maintenance than something like a Tektro. So just plan for that, be prepared for it and pay attention to it as you start to put, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles on this bike. Okay, on to the electric bike report circuit test. Now our circuit test is a one mile loop consisting of four right hand turns, one 30 foot climb. Griffin, who is 230 pounds, is our rider for consistency purposes of this test. And really the point of the test is we're trying to see how well the motor engages, what the average speed is from PAS zero, so no assistance, all the way to five. 
And so how did the Blix packet do? In general, it did really well. You can see from the graph at assist level zero, it went 13.2 miles. That's actually faster than what we expected. And right in line with a lot of the commuter and kind of commuter and cruiser bikes that we test. And so not what we would have expected out of a cargo bike, really well done. I think it just speaks to how well this bike pedals as a bike. It does not feel like a cargo bike when you're not loaded up. You'll notice assist level one didn't improve very much. And then once you start getting to assist level two, three, four, and five, that's where you start to see that nice steady increase that we're looking for in the circuit test. So big takeaways from there. Number one, it actually pedals fairly well without any power assistance. Um, it's still gonna be a pain in the butt climbing up a hill. So definitely don't recommend running out of battery, um, but it does pedal well. Assist level one, we do think that they could kind of change that up a little bit to where it does give you a little more power engagement. Griffin noticed that after about seven miles per hour, it kicks out. And so, and I kind of found the same thing. Like I actually didn't pedal this at all in the assist level one. I found myself much more in assist level two and assist level three. That's where I felt most comfortable, especially carrying cargo. And then if I really wanted to open it up, if I was up on a road and needed to get up and go, assist levels four and five really do give a nice power kick and gets me up to that 20 miles per hour fairly easy. The only last takeaway that I have on this is this test is where we started to see um, kind of a little bit of ghost pedaling with this front chain ring. So the front chain ring, it's that 48 tooth chain ring. And when you kick it into assist level five, you do, it just feels a little bit like it's over geared or excuse me, under geared and just not quite enough. And so you end up ghost pedaling just a little bit. So if they improved it again, just a little bit there, I think these test results would even be better. On to our range test. Now the electric bike report range test consists of two different rides. One is the max assist level. So we put this at PAS5, see how far it can go. The next one is a minimum assist level to see how far it goes there. Now with the minimum assist, we basically are trying to get it to where it feels like any bike, as in where the motor is engaging and giving you something. You'll notice from our circuit test, assist level one didn't do much. So we actually did this on the minimum range test, minimum power range test at assist level two. So how did it do with these? You know, again, remember we have the dual battery setup. So that's two batteries that are both 48 volt, 12.8 amp hours for a total of 1,228 watt hours. That's a lot of capacity. It actually showed in the range test. Blix claims that you should be able to get from 50 to 80 miles, and that's right about where we got it. So on the max assist range, we got 47.4 miles, and on the minimum assist, we got 78.1 miles. That's a long ways on a cargo bike. And as a side note, on that test, our rider climbed to 1,946 feet. And so that was my son, Josh, he weighs about 150 pounds and basically just put them on the saddle for hours on end to see how far these go. Um, and as you can see, like the bottom line, I think Blix nailed it in terms of range. That's a long ways. And so if you have any kind of range anxiety, definitely get the, two, the dual battery mode. If you only want the single battery, basically just take the numbers we got and cut them in half because they are pretty much identical batteries between the two of them. All right, on to hell hole and our hill test. So the electric bike report hill test is a third mile long, 12% grade up the hill that is literally called hell hole. Um, this is a hill that we do not expect all bikes to make it up, either on throttle or even max pedal assist, but we, but we put them all through it. And what we're doing here is we're really trying to test this new motor, the Shangi 750 watt, 90, 90 newton meters of torque that they have put in to answer the question. Like, I mean, their consumers wanted something that'll climb a hill. This is a hill to test it on. And to be honest, the Blix Packagini climbed it like a champ, um, much better than what we expected for a rear hub cargo e-bike that weighs 75 pounds on throttle only again so this is not pedaling this is just throttle um, it climbed in a minute and 14 seconds at an average of 14.7 miles per hour that is pretty fast on throttle only 
And again, I would have not expected this to make it up hell hole on the throttle if you'd asked me beforehand. On the max pedal assist, so this I put in PAS5, I pedaled, and I'm not pedaling as hard as I can. I'm basically trying to climb the hill without breaking a sweat, something that I can maintain for a while. I climbed it in one minute flat and it flew up the hill at 18.1 miles per hour. And so, you know, you notice how before I talked about how that front chain ring just felt like I needed a little bit bigger. Actually on the hill, I think it did great. Um, and the power from that rear hub motor just did an exceptional job. So if, if you are someone that has a lot of hills on a commute or where you're gonna be using this bike, you're not gonna have any problem. You can absolutely climb those hills without breaking a sweat, without getting off the saddle. It did a fantastic job. All right, we've taken the Blix Packagini through all of our testing. But how does it perform as a cargo bike? What can you put on here? What are the different accessories? Because that's really what you're looking for when you're buying a cargo bike. You want to carry stuff and you want to carry people. So we have a handful of accessories from Blix that they sent us. And then I'm going to walk you through um, how I would actually personally set it up for my scenario. But keep in mind, number one, there's more accessories on Blix's website than what I'm going to show you here. Number two, there's over 200 different accessory combos that you can mix and match and play Legos with. So there's a lot you can do with the Packagini. Um, so first up, we have the front basket. 50 pound weight capacity has this little bottle holder. Personally, I would remove the bottle holder because I would prefer a, a you know, to put in a bottle cage here, but nice and sturdy, definitely holds a lot there. Moving back, they sent us four different bags. So we have the, the top rack bag, which has a little kind of insulated cooler inside, a couple different zippers. I actually find that it sits up front very well. And I really like the shape of that. Um, as far as bags go, we have the city tote and the everyday bag. Both of these connect to the side railing using these clips. They're very easy to get on, off. They have this, the side shoulder strap. So if you want to put your laptop in it, they have a laptop sleeve. Very good for commuting to and from the office and then going home with some groceries inside. Both of those bags. Then we have their smart pannier bags here. They hold more than, than the other ones and are great options if you really want to fit in a lot of stuff. Now, the rear section. You'll see I have the running boards down below. That's great. If you have kids or other people on the back, they need a place to put their feet. Um, you want to keep the feet out of the spokes, obviously. And that's where this mesh guard comes into play. I actually really like the mesh guard. I like the looks. Um, it's pretty easy to install. The only downside to it is I would install that last after I got all the other cushions on because otherwise you have to kind of reach your hand underneath, et cetera. So it makes it a little bit challenging, but once it's there, it's fantastic. Mention the cushion. I have two of the rear seat cushions and they are surprisingly comfortable. Um, and then you have the VIP section. So this is for your very important little people, passengers, um, but it actually works really well with cargo as well. And I'll show that with my setup. So when I, you know, we don't have a test for cargo bikes yet at Electro Bike Report. So I kind of created one, don't know if it's gonna stick or not. Um, but I call it the grocery store test, right? I'm on a cargo bike. Is this really a, a vehicle replacement? It's not going to be if I can't go to the grocery store, load it up and get home. So I made a gross, grocery list. It was fairly comprehensive, like of a basic grocery run. I ended up buying about $150 of groceries ranging from you know, soda, cereal, eggs, milk, et cetera. To be honest, I was a little bit worried at the start that I wouldn't be able to quite fit it all in. Um, and so I loaded it up with the smart pannier bags. I kept this frame on because I wanted to actually use some egg or some, some milk crates. I ran just to Walmart, grabbed a milk crate. I couldn't quite fit two but I found another little basket here, which I ended up not using, but you could put those kind of side by side if you wanted to. Um, so you'll notice with the, with the crate, the nice thing about it is you can just bungee it to this VIP section and it stayed rock solid. So I got back, from, I went to the grocery store, bought everything, loaded everything up, 
you know, I loaded the produce, I loaded the bag of rice, I loaded the cereal, I loaded the milk, just all of those things. And I stepped back and I still had space. So I ended up grabbing a inflatable stand-up paddleboard and stuck that right here in the rear. Um, that added 35 pounds and I was, I think that answers the question of can this be used as a car replacement because I fit 150-ish dollars of groceries in, including an inflatable stand-up paddleboard. Riding it around, it rode really well. The one thing I will note, as you shift weight to the very tail, which is what I did with the stand-up paddleboard, probably didn't pack it right. It was at the very end. It weighs about 30 to 35 pounds total. Um, it did make riding a little bit more challenging. I didn't have much of a problem, but if you were a beginner rider, you'd probably feel a little bit unstable. And so you really do want to pack it with as much weight to the center of the bike as possible. When I removed the stand-up paddleboard, I had no problem riding, rode all the way home, didn't crack any eggs, didn't smash any bread, didn't spill any milk. Um, and actually had a lot of fun, got a lot of looks from ongoers who I think are gonna turn around and try to figure out what the heck I was doing. Um, and kind of to answer the question, can this be a vehicle replacement? I would say yes, absolutely. Um, I don't think it could do a Costco run for my family. We've got six, but for your average grocery store run, commuting to and from the office, it would work fantastic. And how I would set that up is I wouldn't actually use the smart pannier bags. I would use probably the everyday bag and just get two of them to where I could essentially ride to work like this and then clip two of these onto the side if I wanted to carry groceries. Then when I get home, I just take those off and if my son wants to go for a ride, I can just put them in the back so I don't actually have to change any of the setup and I can just ride it with kids, without kids, with groceries, without groceries, use it as a commuter, use it as a, a cargo bike, which again, just shows how utilitous and valuable this bike can be. Okay, so overall, I think you can tell that we really do like this bike and it performs very well. Um, in fact, we would say that it's one of the best electric cargo bikes in this price range, hand down. And, you know, we asked the question at the beginning, is this the genie in the bottle? And I would say, yes, Blix nailed what they were trying to do. They increased the safety of the bike by adding hydraulic disc brakes. They increased the range of this bike. I mean, 50 to 80 miles is a very long way on, on, a, on a cargo bike. Um, and then they also increased the power. This, the Packagini climbs hills like a champion. And kind of bottom line for me, this is gonna be one of the bikes that I'm gonna to try to sneak it out of here without Griffin noticing, because I know we're gonna fight over this bike. You know, he's got a couple of small kids, I've got a couple of small kids. We love to run to the grocery store with our families, buy some groceries, ride around town. And this bike, for me, passed what I, again, personally is my impor most important test. That's what I call the AJ test. So AJ is my five-year-old. He is a ton of fun, cutest kid in the world, He's also the youngest kid and is very picky. My wife's always wanting to get him out riding around on bikes because she really loves these things. AJ tends to push back. They're just not very comfortable. He kind of complains about the bumps. And so it's kind of like twisting his arm. He likes it when we get out there. Um, so I brought him in. I rode around for several miles and just asked him, hey, KJ, you're working with daddy. Tell me what you think. And you'll notice in the B-roll, Every single time I asked him, hey, what do you think? He gave me two thumbs up. He said it was comfortable. There's just, there was something about the runner boards, the cushion seat, the VIP section that just made him feel very comfortable. And he had a blast and he keeps asking me, hey, dad, when are you gonna bring home that bike? Cause I wanna go on a bike ride. And that's what it's all about for me, right? I can not just go get groceries, but I can actually put my kids in here and have a ton of fun with them. And that's, again, for me, that's what it's all about. So I'm also going to give two big thumbs up to Blix with the Packagini. 
With all that being said, I hope you found this review helpful. And if you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow the links below that will take you to the full in-depth review of the Blix Packet Genie. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Justin Taylor. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you out on the trail soon. <music>